Welcome to Formulae Videos, Season 1. We're going to be looking at differential calculus. Differential calculus is actually based on uh, what the work of Gottfried Leibniz and Newton, who lived more than 300 years ago. But you'll hear more about that in just a moment. So, you're probably wondering, what is this word calculus? I've heard it before. I've probably even done algebra before. But what does it really mean? Well, let me first off start by saying that there are two types of calculus. There's differential calculus and integral calculus. We're going to be looking at differential calculus in this season, and we're going to be looking at just an introduction to calculus. So, let's actually look at what calculus means. Well, you've probably studied algebra before, so you probably know of a linear function. A linear function has a constant slope. For every increase of 1 in x, we may have an increase of 1 in y. There is a change in x relative to y. So we can say that the slope of this function is equal to 1. And this is where we make that fundamental link to calculus. Calculus, and in particular differential calculus, which we're looking now at now, is all about slopes. The difference in y relative to the difference in x. The dy over dx. So let's say this function here, this linear function, is the f of x. Well, it has a derivative known as the f prime of x. The f prime of x is simply just a function that represents the slope of this function. And you're probably thinking, well, that's not really interesting, because if we've got a function that represents the slope of that function, it's just going to be a flat horizontal line of y equals 1. And yes, you're right. But let me introduce to you an idea where having differential calculus is important or useful, because not all functions are linear. We can have polynomials. And here, we don't have a static slope. The rate of change there is different to the rate of change over there, and the rate of change down here. And that's where we use calculus to find the slope of the tangent at a given point. That's like finding the slope at a given point. What is the slope of this line when we're looking at it at, say, x equals 1 on that function? And uh, you'll be learning how to differentiate in this uh, series. And to differentiate is simply uh, the verb of being able to um, work out what the slope function is. But now, let's have a look at a few contextual examples to actually wrap your head around why calculus can be important in the real world. Cars. We all drive cars. Imagine this little toy car is going on a drive down Calculus Highway. Well, let's say that we have a displacement function. We can represent this as s of t. The s represents displacement, and t represents time. This is like having an f of x, but this is a special term, because a displacement function has special notation. Well, let's say that the s of t can be graphed by t squared where t is greater than zero. Because, of course, we can't have negative time. And that's going to be in metres. Our displacement will be in SI unit metres. Now, let's say that we have a v of t. We want to know how fast that car is travelling. Well, we have good news, because the slope of a displacement function is actually the velocity at that given point in time. So therefore, the derivative of a displacement time function is a velocity time function. That's excellent, because it allows us to look at how fast this car is going to be going after three seconds of its travel down the highway. In the future, you'll be able to differentiate this function, thanks to these videos. But today, I'll differentiate it for you and we get 2t 
meters per second. I presume that we're just going to work with seconds here for this question. And as a result, we can find the V of 3, the velocity at 3 seconds. It equals 2 times 3, because we just substitute 3 for t, meters per second, which is of course 6 meters per second. And one last example, bacterial growth. You've probably done it before in biology or something like that. You actually have a petri dish and you uh, culture a bacterial colony. They increase by millions every hour. Let's have a look at working out the rate of change. So let's say we have a BT function, a bacteria time function. It's just like having an f of x function. But now we want to find the b prime of t. This is simply the rate of change in that original bt function. Hmm. So let's presume that uh, the bt function, again, we're working with hours because that's probably a suitable unit to uh, describe bacterial growth. But let's assume that it is uh, t squared um, millions. And that gives us the number of bacteria on our petri dish at any given time. So, if it's uh, at one hour, we're going to have one million, at two hours, we're going to have four million, etc. But now, we want to be able to use its derivative to work out the increase per hour, after three hours. So, we've let it culture. Um, I'll differentiate this function as I did above. And um, we know that t, uh, 2t million per hour is the rate of increase. So we know that the b prime of 3, hence the rate of change after 3 hours, the amount of increase in bacteria after 3 hours, is going to be equal to 2 times 3 million per hour, which is going to equal 6 million per hour as an increase. And that's exponential growth. <laughs> okay. That's all for this episode on differential calculus. Hopefully you have understood the concepts and you can see the importance of using calculus in the real world. We're going to have a lot of fun over this season and you're going to learn how to do some really cool maths. I'll see you next time.